I get to see you like once every four or five years, Mr. Ruben Gonzalez. How, uh, when did, when did you first leave handball for racquetball? Because I know when I came on the scene, you had left and then you was coming back because your kid was playing handball for a little bit. Uh, I think I left around 23. When you were 23? 23, 25. Okay. When I left, uh, it was one of my, um, one of my buddies that was a handball player. Yeah. Went out and built the racquetball thing. He built it? Yeah. You know, the first racquetball club on Staten Island. Okay. So, um, so I was kind of towards my end of my career of yeah. handball. So this, this just basically came right at the right, the right time. So I was doing both. By right? end of your career, what do you mean? Like you were still very young, but you felt like... But I felt I needed to get to a, a different level. Okay. Uh, and I was the game dying at that end. At time? It was. It was dying at the end, and um, and like when I, uh, age twenty three, I didn't pick up racquetball yet, but I knew about. I was watching a couple of the events of racquetball players, pros, and the money they were making. Who was was it like Hogan around that time? Hogan, Dave Pack. Yeah, Dave uh, Pack. Charlie Brumfield. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Brumfield and everything. And you know, I saw the opportunity that they were they had sponsors, which we didn't have in Hamble. Uh, right. You were traveling all over. They were traveling all over the world, which we didn't have that in Hamble. Um, they had big money tournaments, which we didn't have in Hamble. Which you didn't have in Hamble. And so that, so I figured, let me play my last tournament. I think it was was the Black Bull. AAU? The AAU. And I, was, I think I was playing Al Torres. Okay. Something like that. I know I won the AAU Nationals the year before, but I don't think I won that one. But I'm not sure. Um, and then I just gave it up. And then I went straight to straight what, to racquetball. What made you think... What made you think that you succeed in racquetball? Just gave it a shot. Yeah. Just, just gave it a shot. I, and I, determination I, will. Determination. Well, from you, you were extremely athletic, obviously. And you were, from what I hear tell, you were probably the fastest guy that's ever been on the court. That's what they say. I'm Between really someone like you and I think um, Winfield Balance, I heard, was really fast too. Okay. Um, but so that's what. I, so I took that that handball experience to the racquetball. What I mean by handball experience was. Determination, right? Uh, the will to win, my speed, and then I had to learn everything else beyond that, which was the four wall, right? Learn a backhand. But did you did, did you play four wall handball? No, never played four wall handball. That's incredible. That that is never, incredible. Never played four wall handball. Uh, I tried I, actually. I tried it once or twice, and never. And you just like naturally it. picked up racquetball. Right, and I picked up racquetball and uh, I practiced because I was still living in the Bronx. Right. So I used the one wall court for my backhand, okay. forehand, backhand shots, kill shots, and everything. Um, so my guy opened up a racquetball court, and I was still living in the Bronx. So I was so I quit Hamburg. So I was traveling from two hour two hour yeah, to trip Staten Island, right? From Staten Island. From the Bronx to Staten Island. Took the bus to mm. the ferry. The mm. ferry. No, 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 no. I was in the Bronx. From, from the Jerome, Bronx. From, from the Bronx to Staten Island. The Bronx to Staten Island. Yeah. And then two hour ride. And then a two hour ride. Just to play, practice, train, work everything that I watch, saw from the pros, videos and everything. Just put it together. And where, where did you see these videos? Like VHS? Or Basically VHS yeah. uh, at the time. Because um, there wasn't much televised no, either at that time. No, it, it wasn't, but most VHS and a lot of a lot of the stuff was when I went to watch and play and play. I mean, I know when I played tournaments, I lost 21-0, 21-1, you know. Didn't deter I, you? you no, just, I was determined. You knew that you... I, I knew that I was going to... I didn't I knew I was going to be good. I knew I was going to be compet competitive. Right. I didn't know that it was going to take me to this, okay. to Hall of Fame. Now, to, did you play eventually like the, the, the Pecs and, and, oh, yeah, and yeah, Hogan's? Yeah. yeah. 
And how was that experience like the first time you got on the court? Was it like jittery? Were you like, oh, these guys are the top every of the time food I chain? Got, no, every time I got on the court, it was jittery. Yeah. I like that, you know, because I felt any time that I went in with, you know, with a confidence that I didn't feel nervous, I know I lost. But every time I felt jittery and I, and I, you know, knowing that I, you know, with that mindset, you just gotta, you gotta go in and fight. I won every time. And so I beat Hogan, I beat Yellen, I beat Charlie Brown. I beat all those guys eventually. Yeah, know. Yellen was pretty good too. Yellen was him. good. Uh, Yellen was tough. Yeah. You know, uh, Dave Pack, the Greg, you know, so all, all those guys. You know, so it took me about five years. So I was a late bloomer, which means I was like, 28, to right? About 30. About 30. About 30. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so 30, I hit the pros and it was, I was getting, I was still traveling for the first five years by the club, by the club owner. So okay. I became, a, they, they sponsored like, me. Like a club guy. Club guy, yeah. they'd say sponsor me, travel, you know, travel to the tournaments, local tournaments, Jersey, you know. Now did they, when you say they sponsored you back then, did they take a cut? No. You gotta get it out no. of the way. So that was, that's extremely the amazing. Way. No, they didn't take a cut. They just, um, uh, just pay me to travel. Uh, I would just, all I did, I wore that company logo. Right. Uh, but I wasn't sponsored by Aikman at the time. So, and then after five years, when I won, when I won a couple of tournaments, uh -huh. uh, then, I, then I, that's when I got involved with Aikman. And, uh, and from that point on, I started traveling the states. All you know, things that I never did in Hamburg. You know? Like I think, I, for some reason, when I was young, I think I remember you playing in Hawaii in a tournament. Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, we played. I, all, I yeah, played. but I think, I, like, I think I have that memory. Oh, okay. I think I remember, you know, either reading about it, probably reading about it. Right. You know. And um, the price money back then was huge. I mean, I was making, you know, I mean, you know, we're talking about five, ten thousand a weekend. Um, you know, plus bonus money for Mechelon, contract for Mechelon, um, just, you know, all that, I mean, which never, you know, I never saw that in Hamburg. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, now, what do, you, what do you think about the state of the game right now, uh, racquetball? Dying out. Yeah. Uh, I hate to say it, but it's really, it's dying out. It, we don't have the sponsors anymore uh, that they used to have years ago uh, that you could negotiate. I had an agent, so I had to negotiate a, a contract. These young, you know, these kids don't have contracts. These kids don't have agents. They don't have, they don't have the funds. I mean, there's only one or two companies that, that's out there. And right. uh, back then we had maybe seven, 10, you know. Uh, and, you know, we had all the clubs. We had the mom and pops. We had clubs with, with 15 courts, 20 courts. Now, little by little, they're just cutting down, they're cutting down, and next thing you know, they just, they're all closing up, they all got maybe one court. So it's just, it's just not. Yeah, they're using the courts for like weight room weight sometimes. Weight room, aerobics, yeah. and everything. Um, it's unfortunate. It, it is unfortunate. Uh, and, There's still some you know, top, top talent out there. I mean, yeah. he's not a kid anymore. He's been around for a long time, but uh, Kane. Yeah. How, how good is Kane? The best. Yeah? The best. You know, he wasn't in my era, right? Even though I played him a few times, but towards my the end when I was already my sixties or something, right. you know. Uh, but he's untouchable. He's so so good, you know. And it's and it's tough too because it's hard to say how good. I mean, he is good, but it's hard to say how good he is compared to back then when right. in my era. Right, My different error. errors is hard. You guys were playing with like wooden um, brackets, right? Or no, not that. No, we weren't going to go okay. that far. Back okay. there. No, but we had uh, we had Graphite, rounds of they? thirty rounds of thirty two okay. rounds of the, the you know the draw sheets was amazing. I mean, you had to go, you had to qualify, and to get into the main draw sheet. So into the qualifying, right. we had eighty players, maybe you know. 100 players just to qualify and you know and then you had another 80 to qualify in the round of 16s 32s quarters and now he's already in the quarters yeah so there's no competition for him 
you know, our first round was, I had to play you in the first round. I had to play the best guy. I had to play Yellen in the first round. Mm. You know, that's how, so if you don't move up in the in the ranking and everything, that's, that's what you're gonna get, Right. you know, in the first round. So you go, you go through the storm as you've done in one, you know, in one event. So I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that he wasn't gonna be, but he would be. He would be he a little more pushed. tested. He would be more tested. tested. And he, and, and in turn, the guys that played him would get better as well. The guys who played him would get better. Guys with that that would play him would analyze him more, and that's what we did a lot. Right. We just analyzed our players. We we controlled our players. We uh, we saw our players. We watch our players all at night for the next match. You know. So these young kids, they just raw talent. They don't care. They right. just go out there and play, and, and and they just go out there and compete, and that's it. But so. Getting back to Kane, uh, is it, it, you know he's not tested, you know. Um, so when you're when you're playing in the quarters already, and you got two rounds to get into the finals. He's, he's not even winning it or tied or, or, or pushed. Right, right. You know, so that's it's hard to say. That's also a product of a times where the uh, the players are decreasing because of lack of sponsorship. Too. Like it's right, you know. There's not there's enough no funds. Fun, not enough funds, you know. Yeah, you know, but some of these young kids, they didn't, they're not smart enough. You know, they just go out there thinking that okay, I'm gonna make a living playing racquetball for the rest of my life. Yes, maybe you could, but you have to have that talent. You have to, you know, you have to be keen to do that. But and even, not, even I think he's struggling right now. He's struggling because of sponsorships and stuff like right. that. They're just not how, paying him what they should be paying him. And how do you get the number one player in the world that, that doesn't have a sponsorship? That's, yeah, that's just terrible. That's terrible. So us back then, we made it enough that we played, we made our own business, you know, we created our own, you know, warehouse. I got, you know, we, we, uh, you know, I did my own clothing line. Yeah, well, you guys became household names, I remember. How, right. You know, so we we created a, you know, a. a the foundation for these young kids, but they didn't, they didn't follow it up after that. You know, uh, we went. You know, we had meetings. We had. How do we change the game? How do we do this? How do we do that? There's nothing like that now, because uh, these kids are just or uh, just go out there and play, and that's it. Right. So you. So what? So what you see now is not kids that are from the United States. They just. I know Mexico's thriving a lot. Yeah, all international. Yeah. All international. So what they right now, well while we were eighty in the eighties, they're in that's how they are now. Right. You know. They they put racquetball is booming. They they putting up racquetball courts all over, all international. So that's so if it wasn't for them to come into the US and compete, there'd be no draw. Mm. You know. Yeah, we're definitely failing here. And then, and then the other, th and then COVID came in. So I would, you know, I think COVID killed racquetball. They closed racquetball. Pickleball came in, and again, I hate to say it, but pickleball is just killing it's every sport. It's exploding. Yeah, it's, it's thriving. It's, it's on exploding. TV. It's, it's on TV. everywhere. It's, it's they everywhere. just had it at the U.S. Open. Yeah, I was just there. Yeah, you know, and uh, I mean, you know, and that's what it is. People As you can try. see. He's wearing a Pickleball Galaxy. That's, my, so. that's the company that I'm yeah. sponsor. That's that's amazing. And uh, and that's and that's what you got to do. You got to keep on. You got to keep. You know, Ectolon went out of business, and everything. They fight, you know they came out. At least they came out with seven of my signature rackets. Uh, you know, before they left, they had my you know signature board, signature rack, uh, gloves, eye guards with my name on it. But then they went out of business. But then, Racket World. Racket World, it's the same company as Pickleball Galaxy. Mm -hmm. So they came out and they put me on board and I'm sponsored by them. And they came out with my new Ruben Gonzalez sneakers. Nice. Um, with my logo on it. I don't, I'm not wearing it. Uh, now, I, I looked down immediately. <laughs> no, I was I'm like, I need to I see them. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you go on Racket World, you, you'll see it. Oh, okay. You know, uh, they got my new, you know, this is the new Ru the, the Ruben Gonzalez glove. Uh, uh, they have I moving the tides out. You know, so they got stuff that they I'm um, back, you know, so I haven't kind of never left the game. No, no. You you, you've always been at the forefront of it. You know, people still, at least especially here in New York, all the handball players, they know 
of Ruben Gonzalez. They, you know, they uh, they know the stories, the legends of you know you coming out of the Bronx and how great you were with the uh, Spalding. Um, it's still a great debate who was the best Spalding player, and the fact that you are still mentioned there. There's only like three guys that are mentioned as the best ever in Spalding, mm -hmm. and um, it's always been the same three guys. It's you, Buddy, Buddy and Marquez, okay. and th those are the three guys that are always mentioned. Um, it's just unfortunate that a lot of us never got to see you play. I got to see you play blue ball, you know, but you had already stopped playing handball. You right. was well into racquetball. Yeah, I and you to. came down and uh, you played in the tournament at West Forth. I actually played your son in one of my first tournaments oh. at West Forth. Um, I. I always remember it because you know you were like a celebrity, which you still are to us. And um, I um, I played your son and I beat him, and you walked over and you shook my hand and you were like, "You played great." And I was like, "Holy shit!" Ruben Gonzalez just said I played great, so you know I appreciate I appreciate that and thank you for that. That was a that was a coming of age moment for me when I was you know I think I was like maybe I don't even remember how old, but it was it was it meant a lot. You know, you mean a lot to this community, the Spanish yes. community, black community, our community in general in Hamburg. We you. really I mean, appreciate I, I, you. you know, I mean, I tried and everything uh, to try to do this, uh, but again, you know, I have a different life. I have a different life. Right. Uh, well, you were like the first of us that branched out. Right. You know into something bigger let's not say better you know i still right. love handball but right. something bigger at the time and succeeded you know i i know it's not overnight it wasn't overnight no. you know to us i guess it seemed like it was overnight you know because it was like oh he was the number one handball player in the world before you know he's playing racquetball he's at he's at the top i know it took a lot of hard work sweat lot, dedication yeah. You know, Definitely. Um, that's the stuff that we don't see, right. you know, the hard work that you put in. But obviously you were a natural talent, you know, because how else can you well, explain? It wasn't how, natural talent. No, but I mean, you had natural ability. Okay. You had right. a lot of natural ability that you obviously work hard for because you, how else would you explain you being at the top in pink ball and small ball right. where you won the AAU, right. you know? And then you moved over into racquetball and you succeeded there as well. Well, it's just, you know, dedication, uh, will, will power, uh, you know, and I, a lot of sacrifice. That's, that's another key too, because, you know, I had a life, I had kids and everything. And in Hamburg was a little sack, you know, I mean, it's more of a schoolyard get together, Yes, you had your girlfriend, this and that. But when I went to racquetball, I had the wife and kids. So, you know, I, I, I sacrificed a lot of graduations, a lot of birthdays, a lot of uh, a lot of parties with my kids, a lot of... Uh, you were away a lot, too. I was away a lot. Yeah. I was away a lot, you know, almost 365 days a week. Yeah. A week. You know, I mean, a year. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, but it paid, you know, paid it, the bills. It, pay, it paid the bills. Yeah. I mean, it's like I told my wife, I said, it's, I could have been this or I could have been a car salesman that I had to travel to Japan or to this and that for months, you know, so it's the same, it's the same job, right. but it's a different feel, you know. Uh, but it was so, a job, but it was doing what you loved too. It's so what I loved and I kept a roof. Over, that's the, my main thing was keeping a roof over right. our head. You know, uh, I provided for my wife. I provided for my kids as best as I can. You know, because it's hard. Yes. You know, it was hard, but in the long run, I can say it paid, it paid off. I mean, you know, I, you know, I'm not a rich, rich guy, but you know, I'm not saying. So, here's here's the uh, everlasting question: Who was the uh, best sporting player ever? Best bowling player ever. I would say Buddy. Buddy. Buddy was good. Uh, Lefty was good. Um, uh, who else was good? Uh, man, it's been so long. I forgot a lot of the a lot of the names. But it was a few few guys that just was right right there. You know, um, and in, in small ball. Uh, down in Coney Island, that I, my my competitor was Al Torres. Uh, 
Steve Sour, Ruby Sour. Um, who, uh, who else? What's that? Uh, Ruby Over, right? Ruby Over. Yeah. Uh, before Dorsal. Huh? Before yes. Dorsal. Yeah, before Dorsal. Oh, before Dorsal. Yeah. Yeah, Dorsal came a little bit after. There was a, the, the brothers, the, the um, Over Oscar. brothers. Yes. The, 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 Oscar, Oscar and Ruby. Ruby. Yeah, they, they were tough. Uh, oh, Steve Sandler? Yeah, you mentioned Steve? Sandler. Sandler was amazing, yeah. I mentioned Steve Sandler? Yeah. Uh, Steve Sandler was tough. Uh, you know, Al Torres was tough in small ball, too. Um, man, it, it's been so long that I... Was... Could you have beaten Buddy prime to prime? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we went, you know, we went back and forth a lot, you know. As scoring-wise, like, who won the most? I don't know. Yeah. Where where did you guys play the most at? Was West it the Fourth. village? Yeah, yeah West Fourth Street a lot. Not in the pro because I retired six, uh, ten years ago when I was sixty. Yeah, uh, I but, still see you out there playing. You know, so just just playing. I mean, these guys just keeps calling me out. You know, yeah. I got <laughs> to come out and play. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that is that you know with the new company with my company, right? Uh, with, uh, Pick Pick Galaxy, Galaxy. Yeah. You know they come up with my racket. You know with you know with my products with right. my name on it. Of course you got to come out. You got to yeah. promote. You gotta, Sneakers, the gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. all great. Yeah. You know, you know, incentive, you know, it's how it's I get paid. Pleasure talking <laughs> to you, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, my pleasure. Awesome, my man. Yeah. Ruben, welcome. Uh, 